I've never taken advantage of fans. I'm yeah, I'm banned from betting, period. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a big time degenerate gambler. Like, win some, lose some. Like, you have to understand, Mickey. There's somebody out there that thought the same way you did and, and they ruined their shit. All right. We well, need a guest appearance from Space Jack underscore. Yeah, let's do it. Me and, me and Jacko are shotgunning because everybody pussy. Rizard, you doing it too? Yeah, where's my. Dazzle Dem, you're. <laughs> Thank you. We are doing our traditional uh, New Year's trip right now, actually. We've actually spent New Year's every time together. Well, you didn't come with us last time. This is our I don't know where I was last year. Did he, did, right, did Mickey come with us last New Year's? Yeah, he went to Brian Head. Oh, you did? Yeah, I don't know. Brian Head on it. We were looking at it on, today. He had the, the, the ticket for the snowboard place. I'll remember. You know, Mickey doesn't remember shit, dude. Right, well, you know that scene from Wolf of Wall Street when Matthew McConaughey is telling uh, Leo, he goes, have you ever lived life so vigorously? No, no, it's Robert California from The Office. And he goes, uh, have you ever lived life so vigorously on the edge that your brain literally can't hold the memories? No, I haven't seen that. It's a sick clip, and I feel like that's how I live so much. And that's, <laughs> why, and that's why I can't remember stuff. There is like a... Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, me too. That is like a, a true thing, though, too, because I think we do so much in life that, it, like... Hey, Bro, sometimes I can't keep up with myself. Exactly. But I'm almost desensitized nowadays. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever feel that? Right, Majorly no. desensitized. And so I, like when you're like, you don't feel like the fun you're having is this fun anymore. When, so you like build this like, here, take your shotgun, then we'll get into wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. This thing's safe. I want to film it. Damn, these things are good. By the, by the way, shout out Beast. Monster Energy Beast. Is it zoomed out? No, it's just Snapchat. You want me just to grab you all? Yeah, but oh yeah, we should have talked about it. <laughs> uh, Cheers to the new year. Wait, you feel me? Go ahead. Cheers to the new year. Uh, what's it called? Nasty beast. This would be a nasty new year, boys. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking God, I'm first. <laughs> okay, well, <the> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Alright. Fuck that fire. I'll grab these. We could do that. Oh, I guess it. What are you doing, Kate? <laughs> I heart mills. <laughs> okay, guys, we can't I mean, it kind of looks cool oh! for the video. <laughs> it's on fire. Oh my god. Oh, dude. We don't have to do all that. Like, oh you, you're, you're fine. Oh! We'll just leave it. We'll just leave it. Leave it. Leave it like that. Because it melts. Leave it. It's not going to melt. Let's leave this one right there. We'll leave that one right there for Beast. We'll leave that one. Look at the branding right here. Look at that, guys. We'll do some branding. I just stepped my socks. I hope you all enjoy your podcast. This is Shane and Mickey. Happy New Year. Hey, Riz, you, you mind, you mind yeah. checking on that just in case? Yeah. Because uh, there was a lot of shit going on, so just in case the focus is off. Finally got Rizzy on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Rizzy's never wanted to go on a podcast. Glad we got him drunk enough to get on. But he, 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 he's from Canada. Like, he never wanted to talk because he didn't want to ruin any... Well, he's got his visa now. Yeah, he's half a citizen. So he's got his visa now, and he like he didn't want to ruin any chances of him getting into America because he didn't want to say anything wrong and then be being fucked or something like that. Whatever. But does it look good? Sweet. It looks fire. <laughs> For sure. Um, we were just talking about being desensitized. Yeah, you know what's crazy? So all right, so it's from the office. Um, James Spader plays Robert California, right? Who's Michael Scott's fill-in. So basically, he's the boss. But he's like this really eccentric weirdo, really rich. But he's like a weird guy, you know? And he's kind of like... what? He's just like kind of eccentric, right? He's a weirdo. And uh, he leaves a voicemail on one of the female staff's phone. But he can't remember what the voicemail is. He didn't know what he said. He just couldn't remember, right? So he comes in to work, and he's trying to fish for information. And he says, um, have you ever... He's like... He's talking to one of the women, and the woman says, you don't remember what you said. And he goes, he's talking to Pam, and he goes, Pam, have you ever lived life so vigorously on the edge that your brain literally can't hold the memories? And she goes, no, I haven't. But she plays just a receptionist. Five days a week, she has the same job. She's a receptionist at a paper company. Nine to five. Nine to five. Normal human being. You know, I don't want to use the word boring, but like regular, 
right? And then Robert California, who's this like mega rich, eccentric, he goes hard, he parties, he travels the world, he does all these like really extravagant things. He's living a life that's so intense that his brain can't hold the memory. And I, that's super relatable. And you're right with the desensitized. It's like it comes to a point. Yeah, even even I think on like the uh, basic instinct level, you know where I think it shows itself the most is in sex. Like, you know, when you're young and you're new to sexual experiences, every new experience, every first experience is new and it's exciting. But as you get older, you're like, I've already done that. I've done missionary. What can we do now? Oh, let's try, Turns you know. into dudes wanting like to munch box and butthole. And yeah, and it gets plug. crazy. Dude, honestly, I, I, I have this theory, right? Because I feel like because a lot of these rich... Say, say like, um, elite rich people, right? Like, they say, for instance, like, on the outside spectrum, they pay for pussy. Right. Like, say, for instance, like, this one, because not everybody's the same. There's one millionaire guy out there that just pays for pussy all the time. Okay. I feel like he gets so much pussy, and he gets so over it, they eventually turn gay. Is that, is that weird to say? Like, I don't know, because I feel like, because they've experienced so much... I think that that specific example is a rarity, but I think what we're starting to see more through the media is those people that live a life that's so extravagant, so extreme, all the money in the world, they've already bought and done everything they can buy and do. They're like, what's next? And a lot of times it turns into these incredibly evil sexual perversions, and that's why I think we see a lot of stuff with you know, minors or a lot of possibly like, gay sex and stuff like that. Because they get desensitized. They're desensitized because they've already experienced to the extreme all the regular stuff. That's actually fucked, bro. That's actually crazy. I also think that's why a lot of these like crazy uber wealthy families have such crazy histories in the family. Kidnap, murder, like DUIs, drug addiction, stuff like that. They've already done it. They've done all the fun stuff that you could possibly pay for. Yeah, like the regular fun stuff, yeah. That kind of comes down to like also when kids are grew up with money. Like, Good for them, by all means. But, like, they grew up money. They, like, done everything fun. And they're so strictly to be this good person that they're like, fuck that. I'm going to be a shithead kid. And then they end up getting into drugs because it's outside of their yeah normal spectrum. And I agree. But even people without money, like, right, like, um, like you didn't grow up rich, right? Mm-hmm. But you grew up extreme, right? You saw different types of extremes that could be a- available to someone without being born into money, right? And then you grew up to be an X Games athlete, Olympic athlete, Nitro Circus athlete, and you do all these crazy extravagant things. With extra- yeah, everything besides X Games and Olympics, but yeah, that was sick. Nitro was cool. <laughs> yeah. you know, you're one of like the yeah. top BMXers in the world. You're one of the top like pitter riders, period, right? In Thank history, you. you'll go down as that, Thank you know, one of the best. Thank you. Um, you know, and, and you're like that in a lot of sports, yeah. a lot of things. And you do extreme things, even non-sport related, just wild stuff that most people never do. Yeah. So even with you, it's like, oh, I've already done the massive, like, 80 foot drop on a water slide and caught you know 70 feet of air like that's crazy relatable like on like um, a level of people getting desensitized yeah because yeah. I'm like to the point where I feel like I have to do more like exactly and it's like what's next you yeah know? you're doing like triple backies off roofs into skinny little pools and stuff like that and that's crazy but that's what you're there you know yeah. what I mean and then some obviously <clears throat> well it is New Year's, New Year's Eve, actually. Yeah. Um, I feel like we do these, like, traditional, like, uh, videos on Humecula that we redid, like, the sickest New Year's videos, and this is, like, by far the most relaxed time I've had on New Year's. Like, I don't, I'm not stressing on filming everything right now. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Like, I'm just kind of on this level where I'm like, dude, I want to have fun and just experience life right now, because even when I was filming for Humecula, like, stuff... Dude, I, it's like not. It doesn't show as much fun, and it were was you, fun. Were you stressed filming with SideQuest? Yeah, for sure, and it was too much stress for me. And I feel like I just um, I love those boys to death, but like, I mean, I haven't really even broken news, but I don't think I want to film with them anymore because I think it was vice versa too. They 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 um also had their differences with me, and like I had my differences with them, and and like I will be brutally honest, like I think they're work spectrum is to like beat YouTube and, and break numbers. My version of YouTube is building something cool and fun. And I think something I look at and was like, I'm proud of like, and they want to like fucking get numbers and stuff. And I like totally respect that. Whatever. I will say that for both of your specific goals, 
like them as a group and then you as like a group, right? You both are really excellent at your goals. Like you built and are building a beautiful piece of art with Hamecula, right? Like that's like yeah. so dope. I, to this day, I go back and watch old videos and it's awesome. And with them, they do crazy numbers, you know? Yeah. So, so you have two different goals. I thought that would mesh more than what we thought. And like, they, I think the, the, the drive of like um, where we were going, like it was like, it was like fucking energy right away. Like where where are we going? You know. Then it just like I think we uh, didn't have like the right. We didn't align well. Like and they're like still my good friends. I love them to death. But like all amical, amical. Just yeah. I don't know even know how to explain it. Like they just they wanted they want to do this music thing, and I fucking completely back it. Like the music shit's sick. I just I'm not. I don't. And I even tell them like straight up, house music. I don't like it. I, I respect it. I, I, I know how to, I know how to respect it. And I know how to respect the talent. Like I look at like like a Fred again, and I'm like, I could look at that guy and I could be like, I respect his talent because I'm like, dude, I could see him doing shit. Like I'm like, all right, and like and like Kale, like I respect his talent on music because I could see when he's doing his shit, like he's doing stuff. Like you know what I mean? He's not just fucking on an iPod and fucking ripping music. Kale's out there like. Kale and Hootie, they're fucking, they're playing music. They're, they're, like, they're rhythm. Like, they're going with the beats and shit. And I'm like, that's cool. But I, I personally just don't listen to the music. I love Kale and Hootie. You know that, obviously. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can't stand electronic music, mm-hmm. point blank. You know, with... Not, I've, never, I've never been a fan either. It's not never been my thing. I don't understand it. I think it's like a weirdly, uh, like a weirdly trend hip thing to like electronic music right now. Probably that fad's going to go away, I think, you know, like as music changes over time. But um, I never was able to get down with it. But I love them. You know what I yeah. think is the coolest part about them on their DJ thing? And I'm so, and by the way, I'm so supportive. So supportive. Me too. Me too. I think the coolest part is them as, let's just call it a duo, right, or a group. The energy and like the demographic and like the the atmosphere. Yeah. What the, you, I, They could play any music. If they did it with the same passion they have, with the same support and love that we all give them, like bro, they're unstoppable in anything, and I think it's awesome. Yeah, I, I think they, I think they'll kill it, and like, <clears throat> I'll tell them this too: is like, dude, like, fuck, bro, I'm not the type of fucking dude that's just gonna go post up at the fucking so and so and hit on chicks on a camera. Like, I'm just not that guy, dude. Like. It's, that's a tough one. I can't fucking do that, bro. Like, I came from, like, riding BMX and dirt bikes and, like, doing this crazy stuff. And, like, I thought I could, like, kind of blend in and do some fun shit and, like, and like explore my whole options of filming. But, like, dude, I couldn't fucking, I can't do that. Like, it's not my thing. Like, I want to build something where I look at it and I'm like, fuck, bro, like, this shit's fucking sick. Like, in my eyes. Like, and I did with SideQuest. I think I, like, the editing I did and, like, all the fucking transitions and fucking crazy fun shit we did like it was dope but i like the videos too yeah i thought they were fun and they're engaging to me it was like almost the same as watching homecula videos and i love those videos and i think the the homecula fan base is so strong that like the comments were too op on pro me and like and i and i kind of like came to a position where i was like dude i don't like fuck dude like i felt bad because some of them were even roasting me or they're like pro me and not them like a weird split. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I like, read the fuck, dude. Them, there's like some kid from fucking Albuquerque, fucking New Mexico, just ripping me a new one. And then there's some dude from Mississippi that's ripping them a new one. And I'm like, dude, this is weird. But I came on this time because, dude, I, I feel like I'm too close to friends with you nowadays that I, like, I can't do like a proper interview. You know what I'm saying? What's up, baby? Hit me with one. All right, so I looked up on some stuff with some Jap- chat GBT. Okay. <laughs> this is new. This is new for me. I never, I, like, I this never is, this a- is what I do, Mickey. This is just so what I do, bro. I never done a chat GBT So I, I looked up on chat GBT, what's the best questions to ask a professional gambler? Uh-huh. First one was, like, obviously sick, like, super dope. <laughs> it was, um... Yo, Mickey, if you were to buy any of your friends a brand new Lamborghini that possibly rode BMX, who would it be? Yeah, they, I don't know why they put that. Wow. Like, by the way, I just like feel like that's I just would, like weird that they even said that. I feel like it would be Schmitty or Dubby. Yeah. Okay. Sick. <laughs> cool. We'll move on to the next one. 
<laughs> Dude, I actually did earlier. I looked up on fucking Chad GVT to see like, yo, what's like, good shit to ask a gambler? Because I feel like I'm too close to you, bro. I can't like ask you questions like this, but like, I do know I need to know these questions because I don't I don't ask them on a daily basis. What inspired you to pursue a career in professional gambling? It just happened. It, it, I didn't uh, intend on pursuing gambling as my primary source of income. I, you know, I was in business and things were well. Got out of business, moved to L.A., and I had a new business idea. And L.A. had the perfect demographic for a beta test. And, bef- like, I was supposed to sign the lease to the building that we were going to open the first location in. I think it was, like, the Sunday after the news broke that LA was going to add COVID restrictions. Yeah. So me and my partners were like, oh, we're going to hold off because we don't even know what this COVID thing is. And everybody's this is like, during the rehabilitation. This is after this, that. Okay, this, this is, is after. after. The, okay, so I had gotten out of business. Rehab. Yeah, yeah. I got out of business and I wasn't doing anything. I just like... You you had some extra bread from, yeah. from selling your stuff. Exactly right. Business, right? Exactly okay. right. And I lived in the Miami area and I moved to LA to just like try something new. Yeah. Right, like just live a new life, like you know, like, experience new like, shit. Yeah, you know, because I never lived in LA, and I was like, I've lived in every major East Coast city. I was like, I wonder what Cali has to offer. It looks cool, you know, it looks fun. Yeah. So I move out there. I'm like, let's let me see what this is about. And while I was out there, I knew I always had for a long time an idea of a new business, and never re- I was always too busy. I had my other businesses, whatever. And so when I got to LA, I was like, I'm not working anymore. I have some money to chill and just try new businesses, try new things. Yeah. And I said, you know, I'm gonna bring back my old idea and I went to go try it and I think I was supposed to sign the lease I think it was like a Sunday we were meeting for paperwork I think and it was like right before that week was when the news about COVID came right something along those lines chronologically it's something in that realm and uh COVID essentially is like when you started yeah coming up on like any social media yeah I didn't start social media till we're already deep through into COVID I was anti-social media until like I don't know what year like 2000 even hanging out with you I feel like even hanging out with you, you aren't a social media person. No, nah, definitely not. And you know what's sick? It's because everybody runs the social media for you. They clip everything you say. Yeah. Which well, is because the Andrew well, you, Tate effect. Well, not on, right? Oh, the Andrew Tate effect? It's like, yeah, but not on my... Nobody runs my pages. Like, nobody... Yeah, clip. but they, they always clip something you say and they post it on something. Oh, and they repost it on their own yeah. pages and it goes super viral. Yeah. Yeah, that's 100%. It's been like that from day one, bro. I've never, like pushed for followers, pushed for likes and comments and views or none of that. I'll just post whatever I got. Like, I'll just post something. And someone who just, like, thinks it's dope or thinks something I said was dope or whatever, clip that, and they post it on their channel. And those are what go viral. You're building your name. Yeah, th- those go viral. That Yeah, the Andrew Tate effect, like you said. Those build my name. Those do all that. I'm just chilling. I don't... guys, like, Jack Doherty and, like, other creators that do that. They pay other people to just, like, they'll have, like, contests. I, I may be totally wrong on that, but, like, they'll do, like... Almost like a campaign, like whoever gets the most views on like reposting my content. Yeah, you know what's crazy? One of my current most viral videos came from one of those. So you know Tyler Oliveria Oliveres, the I YouTuber? Yeah. He, so he's a big YouTuber, really nice guy. He'll get like probably if I seen him I'd, I've like seen his face or something. Yeah, like he, he's like a nice kid, man. He'll get like in the first twenty four hours a few million views. And what he'll do in all his videos, he'll say, I'll give X amount of dollars or a giveaway to whoever clips part of this video and gets the most amount of views make sure you tag me so i can confirm it so he has you know like we did one long form for example got over five million views so think about out of those five million fans i'm gonna make this up and say five hundred thousand of them or a quarter million of them had clipped parts of this video and the videos of me and some of them got 20 30 million views on just the clips we're talking about a quarter million to five hundred thousand kids are clipping it just videos of me and that's what one of my more current ones and same with the soft white underbelly i think that's a fucking op situation yeah everyone just loves like clipping my stuff they love what my videos they love things i say whatever okay essentially you so for that first chat gpt question because i'm probably gonna like somehow implant that whatever like essentially on what inspired you to pursue that was just being like into gambling from a child or younger family fan base and mm. family and you just kind of like pursued that and like oh I'm pretty good at this shit. Yeah, so I was always in it since I was a kid through my family and then I had never considered pursuing it. I was just a big time degenerate gambler. Like 
win some, lose some. Like, I you're also care. competitive. But they're always competitive. Yeah, yeah, always competitive. And you have to be competitive if you're going to be a good gambler. Yeah, and then yeah, and then COVID hit, and I couldn't do my new business, so I had no more work, no nothing. But Vegas stayed open to the bitter end. Yeah. So I started going to Vegas because it was open, and I'm new to the West Coast. I didn't know that many people, so I can go there, meet girls, party, go to restaurants, go do whatever, you know, go to events. And LA was shut down. Well, if I'm going to be in Vegas all the time, and I'm already a degenerate gambler, just keep gambling. Why not? And, yeah, and I happen to be winning, and so they would give me free stuff to keep me coming back to try to win their money back. So I'm getting these free trips, and I'm making money, you know, every week and partying in Vegas where there's basically no COVID. Like, why not? Yeah, exactly. Just, why not? So what's the percent on like you think of gamblers that are, in a sense, like beating casinos and not like I think that's a zero zero point one. Well. There's a community of sharps and advantage players, APs, right? The numerically, there's a lot of us. Percentage wise, there's so many more that just gamble, right, and lose. Like your average recreational gambler loses, and most of them are aware of that. I would say how many on a percentage base make like as a collective make up this community of APs and sharps. I would say between one and two percent. That's you have to understand, Mickey. Like, there's people out there that are like, I feel like there's somebody out there that thought the same way you did and and just like gave it up and like literally said, "No, oh, I'm gonna fucking be the shark of gambling" because they played a lot and they ruined their shit. There's a difference between a guy who plays a lot or plays big and a guy who's an AP or a sharp. And a lot of APs and sharps are actually really small gamblers. They're just like, that's their route. They have a guaranteed edge. It's a small edge. And they're like, we're just going to conservatively print cash, just keep printing money on this small edge we have. And they're like content with that. They're not necessarily. Do they, do, do they play like by the doubling rule, you think? Do you, did you ever at one point play the double rule where you like, you doubled your cash, get the fuck? Um, um, depends on the specific play style. Like there's a lot of sharps. Um, that have a percentage that the longer they play, the more money they make. So for them, they would never stop playing if they could, you know. So for them, they don't want to double. They t- they're told to stop. Yeah, like ba- you. literally. Yeah, exactly right, you know. So, so a lot of us would keep playing forever if we could. Um, there's other people that their play style is slightly different, and they have to do like the, as soon as I win something, I'm out. Like Dana White, he's like that. Yeah. Dana's like, if I win my number in my first hand of the night, I'm only playing one hand that night, and I'm going home. I love his uh, speech he gave, too, one time was like, people come to drink and have a good time at the casino which is cool like you should do whatever come to the casino have a drink have a good time and fucking gamble whatever he's like i'm not there for that right he's like that's just not what i do right like i'm there to essentially win you know and he's not having a like a drink and getting drunk and hanging out with his friends like he's like he's he's playing it like to fucking take a shit yeah like he's a, there for there's money. guys he's like there to him, make money. like guys like you is is like um what's like some other names like Phil Ivy and all those dudes like they're more poker right so Phil Ivy is really smart and he's savvy and he's a sharp right so he finds exploits in any version of wagering whether it's casino sports book online brick and mortar he'll look for any weakness or exploit or exploited a feature and take advantage of that until Either he can't or they limit him or restrict him. He, when it came to Baccarat, which is his most infamous exploit, he, he as tried well to with you, right? As well with you, Baccarat, Baccarat, yeah, Baccarat, yeah, okay. for me, yeah. Phil and I both, um, he had gotten caught, right? And what he was doing was not illegal, but it was by casino's opinion, a moral or an unethical. So they took him to court. And although he lost in court, they could never indict or charge him because he never broke any laws, right? He didn't yeah. cheat. No, right? but yeah. he found and exploited a feature, and the judge for two casinos ruled that it was an unfair advantage he took over the casino, so he had to give the money back. But there's a, other things he had to actually give the money back. He, well, yeah. So one casino had already paid him; the other had withheld payment. And the one that paid him, he had to pay back. The one that withheld payment didn't have to pay him. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So I have some more chat with GBT. We could skip these two because, like. I kind of wanted to go on the route of like Chad GBT to be funny. Yo, I'm gonna tell you, you something. know, I'll I'll let you go that route. But if, real quick, do you want to know something interesting about guys like Phil? Yeah. So although people believe that that is how he beat the casinos and what he did, like as a singular sentence, 
Now, I'm not going to say Phil does this, but I'll just say people in our circle do this. They find for a living full time, there's a, a huge, com- not again, I don't want to use the word huge community is, yeah. is you know, relative, but there's a community of us that for the rest of our lives, all we do is we find exploitative features. So where one time it might be card edging, another time it could be, you know, uh, a, uh, a roulette wheel that's weights are unbalanced, you know, or it could be uh, a slot machine that has a glitch in the programming. And there's a community of us that what we do, we're professional gamblers, is we want to beat the house and we look for exploitative features and take advantage. So although... You guys are looking for the closest strategy in a sense. Yeah, you know, we're looking for weaknesses, flaws in the system. You should. Of course. I mean, like, like um, you guys have the opportunity, so take it. Exactly. Right, I'm ban- like, yeah, I'm banned from betting. Sports betting, I don't know how much deep you could talk on that. <clears throat> I can go pretty deep on sports. I mean, so, uh, I mean, we, I've talked to you about sports betting before, and like you have like this cool thing you're doing. Yeah. That, like, I personally, I didn't do it with you, mm-hmm. but like I, I, you told me all about it, and it makes sense. Like, the people, they so so for instance, like the people because you, you're banned from sports betting. Right. I'm ba- yeah. I'm banned from betting. Period. Yeah. Betting period on sports, and yeah. there's other people out there that are banned from sports betting. So, yeah, sports, in theory, has the highest numeric amount of people that are restricted, limited, or banned. But I don't want to like mislead the viewers. If you see someone screaming on Instagram, buy my picks, pick of the week, guarantee lock, they're frauds. All bobo. But technically speaking, mathematically, there are larger exploits in sports betting that sports books cannot seal the gap on it's impossible or it would be detrimental to other aspects that they are profitable on that are more exploitative by a player who knows what they're looking at in sports than there is any other gambling game uh, so is that like and we, we don't have to talk on that is that computer generated a lot of it's computer generated not all of it but i'd say a lot of it like it could be like something where it's like, damn, that's, I mean, the viewers can kind of pick up on that in itself. Like sports betting is crazy. And there is a lot of people there. I see a lot of influencers and rightfully so, like whatever, do your fucking thing, man. Like you're getting fucking paid from whatever so-and-so and dick cheese sports betting. Like who cares? Like fucking do your thing. But like, they're not, they're, are, are a lot of them kind of betting on their losses too? Are they a lot of them kind of like winning off their losses like off the audience losses? I would say there's a huge portion of influencers that get paid by casinos based on their fans losing money. I would say that's an accurate statement, and I've never promoted an online casino. I've never taken advantage of fans. I've never You taken, will never? I've never, I never, ever, ever want to hurt a fan, ever. Yeah. I've never taken money from fans. I've never done paid promo. I've never sold anything. I've never shilled anything. I've never... Uh, 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 taking money. I've never done anything. Instead, I donate, and then I started this thing where I fund 100% of my fans' gambling, and if there's any losses, I cover 100%, and if we win, we split, we chop up the earnings, the winning. So I don't want anyone to gamble, but if they're going to gamble, at least like let me help them. Yeah. I went so far the opposite of like paid promo and shilling and blah, blah, blah for my selfish, greedy pockets where it's hurting other people, that I'm doing the opposite. I'm funding gambling to guarantee people's wins like bro it doesn't get further into the good and further away from the evil which is weird because there's people that take shots at me at the internet all the time you know that and can you blame them on certain things i mean it's like bro never once Um, besides besides the um because what you just said is the the, so 100 percent valid like i fucking I I know you too well. Like I've seen everything first my first hand. Like I've I'm not sitting life. here like I'm not sitting here like trying to be like Mickey. Like is this like bro? I fucking like I couldn't explain to the viewers because they this is the same shit twenty four seven. You fucking hear all the time. But could you blame the natural audience to think like Mickey? Like are you serious? Like are you really making these mon- this money, bro? So there has never once in the history of me being on the internet. A single time anybody was able to disprove a single thing I've ever said. Never once. What has happened is countless times. I could vouch for that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, it's, you yeah. can just look it up on the internet. Never once. Instead, what's happened is countless people, countless times have came forward and said, 
Here's the evidence. I've had um, casino executives on. I've had casino surveillance personnel. I've had online investigators. I've had people who've known me my whole life in real life. I've had people that hated my guts met me. I allowed them an opportunity to look at anything in my life they want. Paperwork, taxes, my phone, anything. Come after hating me. I let them have all this access to me. Come on the internet and go, he is 100% legit. And rightfully so for the, the level of money that is been being made and and even if you have lost the level of money that's been lost or been made like you would think obviously there's going to be investigation i'm and i welcome it every you're time gonna be investigated every you're time there's an like, investigation i welcome casinos it casinos are fucking rich dude like, yeah they, they know that the casinos are rich they're going to investigate what's this guy beating me for yeah how did this guy win 11 million dollars yeah like, how did he take $11 million from our fucking goddamn account? And that's in just and one that shit session. Hurts them. And that's in one session, by the way. I made way more than $11 million. And that, I made him $11 hurts. million in one session. Yeah. But every single time, it's weird that people take shots at me. All I do is try to help the fans. I put money in their pocket. I never push anything on them. I never promote anything. I don't sell anything. I don't even sell merch. And there's nothing wrong with selling merch. But I don't even do that. I don't want to take a dollar from my fans. All I want to do is help them and boost them in life. I put money in their pockets. I've never done anything. So it's weird. I just find it's weird that people take shots. When there's zero, zero people, no matter how much they hated me, that were ever able even one time to produce any evidence of a singular untruth I've ever told. But instead countless people that have came forward and said, I can only find verification of his statements. Yeah. And I could sit here and comfortably say, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, all these motherfuckers that are watching this podcast and even if they have any side of beliefs and stuff, like, keep leaving it because all it's doing is creating conflict and conflict is creating your name to be bigger than it is. Isn't that crazy? The more people argue about me in comments, it's the bigger you get, bro. I can't even tell you. So, so let's pretend that now I probably have close to two billion views on the internet, right? Let's pretend that's the number. Yeah. If there was no conflict, if these people who didn't, who felt any type of way, never stepped forward and like had an argument about me in comment sections, that two billion would probably be at like two hundred and fifty million. Yeah. They like if 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 they were all pro you. If they were all, if you had all views pro you, would it grow as smoothly as you think? Like, in so okay, I wouldn't have grown to what I I'm talking at. about. This like, what about? Okay, so I I don't know. I'm not I'm not educated enough to know about him. Dan Bilzerian. Yeah, I know Dan. Was everybody pro him? No, he no. And Did he have a lot of like people that doubted him as well? Like, yeah, oh, this guy's he had a fraud. Massive amounts of okay, doubt I, and disbelief. I personally thought like I was pro I was pro him. I thought this guy was just killing it. And like I mean, and yeah. probably was. I know Dan personally. I actually like Dan a lot. He something so interesting about Dan. He's very smart. Any single topic that anybody wanted to talk about, even me, and I happen to know for I don't even know why. I know a lot of facts about really odd, unusual things that most people are like not familiar with. Yeah. Anything I brought up or anybody brought up or brings up around him anytime. Not only can he join that conversation, but he can add to it. Okay. And I, I was really astounded. I was like, this guy is very sharp. I mean, that he's so experienced. Yeah, he's intelligent and very experienced in life. And um, so, yeah, so he had an incredible amount of doubt. And he still does. Um, but a lot of things have came out that verified a lot of his story. And I know firsthand uh, some of the people that – so his story basically is – um, he's a, a poker, military, right? Well, before as well, but like that's yeah, that whole yeah, that whole thing. But but like as far as like his like brand goes and like internet personality was, was that he made crazy money in these poker private games, right? And he names drops who he won the money from, and I know those guys, and there's like pretty strong confirmation that he did win that money. Yeah, there's the things that he's played. It wasn't like one game against one guy. So some people argue, and the other people are like, yeah, like. I, I paid him. Well, you know, I was I lost the money. And I've talked to these people. Like, they're in my network of poker players. So a lot of his story, like, is absolutely validated. And some of it came out publicly. So he's one of those guys you could possibly just take your hat off to and be like, respect. Yeah. And you know what? Even – so then he also did get a trust fund. Of, I would say a very large one. But he's open about it. He goes, yeah, I got a trust fund at this stage. In my, this is the stage in my life that I got a trust fund. This is how much it was versus how much I made in, in other avenues, blah, blah, blah. And he's open. And what's interesting is even if – he never played poker, and even if he never got, like, the sweetest setup, right, like, where it was, like, the perfect guy at the perfect time, the right amount of money, blah, 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 
the lifestyle he lives is commendable. Yeah, he fucking tell me, he, uh, tell me he, another like, guy that who's, lives who's able to hate on that. Yeah, tell me another guy who's lived life as excellently and, and like great as he has. He's living most people's fantasies. He did it. He overdid what most people's fantasies are like. Yeah, man, he, he did over it. he went overboard on the fantasies because he openly talked about his sex addiction. He dude like having sex with a lot of girls like a lot of people will find out like Dude, it's sick. Fuck yeah, you're fucking chicks, bro. Like, and, I mean, you could talk on this too. Like, fucking girls, like, so fun, right? But, dude, at some point, you're desensitized on that. Yeah, I agree 100%. And you, like, would you, and when you have the one you think, you may still think you got the blonde with the big tits. You're like, damn, I want the fucking brunette with the fat ass. 100%. And you know what's funny? So, like, obviously, like, it's pretty public information that I would say that I have in a slightly above average, you know, sex life, right? Yeah. And even with all the women that try to be with me or be around me or sleep with me or party with me or whatever it is, huh? You're open to them, by the way. I, I noticed that. Like, you're very, like, very transparent with them, by the way. I'm, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut oh, you no, off. No, 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 like, go ahead. Yeah, you're go ahead. so transparent with every girl. And, like, I've came friends with every girl that you talk to, and, and you openly tell them, like, this is how I am. This is who I am. This is what I do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no, I'm definitely like open and honest, and transparent, and I think it works because I don't think a lot of women are used to that. I think most women are used to guys spitting game and like blah blah blah, and I'm just like, hey, like this is who I am, this is what I'm about. Like, are you into that? Because if you're not, it's okay. I respect it. We'll be friendly. But there's so many more girls out there. Like, you know, I'm gonna find a girl that's okay with who I really am. Yeah, and I think it works. And when the girl is like, thank you for sharing with me who you really are, I. I'm with that. I'm compatible with that. Then the bond is so strong. And I think that's why so many women seem to so strongly like me. You know what I mean? I think it's because you're, you're open and blunt. And in a human aspect, like, you talk to me like a fucking, you talk to me great. You know, you talk to everybody else great. You fucking, like, you really have, like, a good way of, like, carrying yourself. And, like, I don't, I don't think people have, like, the, like, they don't get to greatly see, feel that. And I think, like, people only see these podcast clips that are viral as fuck, and, like, you're on TikTok and stuff, and they don't get to, like, actually experience time with you, bro. Like, I fucking actually got to experience some time with you. And, yeah, like, more than a little. tell you, there's one thing that you're fucking crazy about is, like, god damn, you're so, <laughs> you come up with plans out of nowhere, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I can't do that right now, Mickey. <laughs> Trying to live life vigorously on the edge. I'm glad you're hanging out with us and not Chief Keef right now, dude. <laughs> so, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was um, um, I was asked to make an appearance at two events tonight in L.A. for New Year's. And they were both, you know, very, the probably the two most star-studded events for New Year's in L.A. And, you know, there was... You know, a lot of incentive and reason to want to be there, and I do want to be there, and I got like, I got a couple of famous. Oh, uh, you being places promotes their places too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The places itself. Yeah, and actually, there's a there's a few famous people like sl sleeping at my house all weekend because we were all supposed to go. Like, whatever. They all came in from all over, and I was like, hey, like I left a spare key. Like you guys just enjoy, and we came out here, and um, I don't know, man. You did. It, you, you you it was convincing. To go up because so you you had that situation and you were like hey guys let's go back to L A and we can go spend our time with this and we can do all this fun shit and then we can come back and come back which because, sounds great because, because I'm not a big partier right so I like to leave early anyway yeah yeah I, yeah I don't drink I don't drug none of that stuff I don't even drink caffeine I can't even whatever you know yeah. so uh, my plan was to leave here at eight go straight to the first event at t get there at ten at Stay from 10 to 11.30. At 11.30, go to the second event, watch the ball drop, and by 1 o'clock, be back in the whip on the way back here so we can keep partying here, wake up in the morning and snowboard all day. But there was just so many of us here that it was, like, too hard to coordinate. Yeah, it was a it lot. Was like a lot of people. Oh, he just caught fire. You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I wanted to do all that stuff, but I was like, fuck, dude, Mickey, like, that, I can't do that. It's out of nowhere for me right now, and I'm like, fuck. But, but, we, I, but, but, like, I greatly appreciate that you fucking hang out with us. And, dude, like, by the way, whoever's watching this video, Mickey chose this fucking podcast over hanging out with Chief Keith, bitch. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, yeah Space know. Jack in there. We got fucking everybody's hanging out, having a good time. <laughs>
<laughs> dude, you know what's funny? Dude, like, I'm just so close to Mickey nowadays, I can't ask him, like, questions. So I looked it up on G- chat GBT. <laughs> Smart move, right? He lies about everything on social media. <laughs> if the fans couldn't hear that, Jackson said, that's why he lies about everything on social media. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. He sucks blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I cleaned the house of all cash tonight. Dude, playing. we didn't fucking he, so Mickey was the house. Uh, he, Mickey was essentially the casino tonight on blackjack and we all had ones. We're playing one dollar bets wiped for us. the record. One dollar bets, lots he of fun. Us. And that kind of go, goes to show if you're going to a casino, they're probably gonna fucking wipe you too. Unless you're like at a right now. Oh, it's Chat GBT. <laughs> De- uh, Dem said, uh, no, you're not looking at the notes right now, and I am. Okay, so we're going to skip number one because Chad GBT, you know. And I think it's kind of funny that we're using these. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah, I hit me. It's kind of a funny little thing. Hit me with the Chad GPT. Let's do it. Okay, so this one, can you share some key principles of strategies that contributed to your success? I would say one of the biggest tools I had was Ian. Idiots. Guys, this was an important question. Give me a second. (laughs) Dem showing her tits. It got me distracted. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Holy hell. One. (laughs) She said that for us to stop sucking each other's dick and come suck hers and said, Does the money talk? (laughs) Because I'm sucking some good money dick right now. I would say one of the biggest tools I had that helped me be successful in gambling was Ian. Ian, Ian is your coach. He's my best friend, my coach, fellow degenerate. We love were, him to death. Love him to death. Everyone loves him. Nobody can't love Ian. It's impossible. Too good. Yeah, and he looks like you know a young George Clooney. He's a good looking dude. Great looking. You know, great guy all around. <laughs> Solid human being. Hundred percent. Yeah, total sicko. Total <laughs> <Yeah>. sicko. <laughs> he is. People will never he, understand. He came on the first podcast you had. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He's the one that started the story that went super viral about the high-speed pursuit down Las Vegas Boulevard. Wild. Yeah, yeah. He was the driver. Yeah. yeah. And he was the one that came up with the plan that got us away with all the cash. So it's, it's, it's just in, um, I'm not downplaying Ian at all, but it's essentially Batman and Robin. Yeah, I would, yeah I, would say, I would say he would agree with that, yeah. Yeah, Batman and Robin. Like, you guys have, like, this duo that is, like, unstoppable and a friendship that is unbreakable. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, and he's just such a sicko. Nobody will ever actually understand that doesn't know him personally. And even people that know him personally, you would have to really be around him where he's willing to show you that side. He's one of the sickest human beings I've ever met. Yeah. His entire dick is tattooed because he lost a bet. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> it is and he looks like the preppiest like corniest straight edge like a, kid like yeah yeah nah like bro. he's like a like a like a mom that like just got divorced yeah <laughs> like wet dream you know what i'm saying yeah he always wears his sweater wrapped around his neck <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> little nerd he's the sickest human being i ever so met he, he had a big part in your um strategies for sure, no question. I mean, there were so many things he served and he went as an the mud with you. He went through the mud, and we met through business, uh, and we became like best friends. We we spoke on the phone probably five times a day, seven days a week for a year before we ever met the first time because it was through business. I was living in Miami, and he was doing logistics for a corporation in Los Angeles that I had partnered with. And I was like, I can't be in both places at once. They had already had Ian on payroll for a long time doing all their logistics. They go, we're going to assign Ian to you so he can be – the extension of yourself. You tell him what you need done. He'll relay information and data. And so we were on the phone constantly, seven days a week. And dude, honestly, like, for a perfect person that's doing what you're doing, it's like, you can't do that shit alone sometimes, bro. Yeah. People's biggest downfall. you take your hat off to the people that can. Yeah. Listen, but they man, do have a team behind them that they don't publicize. When it comes to gambling, people's biggest downfalls is not losing or figuring out how to win. Because anybody can win, right? It's walking away while you're up and minimizing your losses. And that's what Ian did for me. When I was up, he would know the number, so I don't have to count my chips. So while I'm focused on playing the actual game. Because you got to look at your strategy. Oh, shout out Kendall Williams. He's FaceTiming me right now. Good ass, dude. I love that guy, by the way. Pitcher for the Dodgers for everybody that doesn't know. Kendall, what up? Me and Shane are filming a podcast. Dude, the guy. What up? <laughs> We miss you too, buddy. Are you like live right now? 
Yeah, like literally, like mics in hand, cameras rolling. Hi, Brandy. Good people, by the way. The people that Mickey's talking to are just I got you. Great people. All right, bye. I told you, there's a there's a whole squad of of star-studded people staying at, at my house. your house. house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in LA, yeah. Um, so like, uh, like you, you essentially were talking about, like, yo, Mick, fucking Ian, like he can be the guy that counts your chips and tells you what's going on. That way, you keep your mind in the strategy. Yeah, he'll know when we're hitting our positive number, and he'll take my chips. And so we also had a rule at every casino in Vegas, and me and him, we we were told we're the only people with this rule. I don't think it's unfathomable that other people could do this, yeah. but I don't think they have. I think we were the first that basic. did it. It, it seems it so is. basic that we had this rule that he can spend my money in a casino as his own. So he can draw from lines of credit, my front money, my deposit money. He could pay commissions. Oh, he can make bets with my chips. If he goes, hey, I'm Ian. Give me a million dollars of Mickey's money Sorry, off his favorite. account. It's already on paper. They can give him whatever he wants. He could be like, hey, if I had $5 million on my account, he could be like, give me all $5 million, go to the cage, cash it out, and go home. It's trust. Big trust. And he never did me wrong not one time in my life. <sighs> That's fucking, dude, I love that. That's yeah. so cool. And you fucking keep his keep that friendship with him forever, bro. Like, in, like I know, whatever happens in life, like, that guy is a fucking, dude, that shows everything. Yeah, man. Bro, there were times where... It would be the middle of the night, and we're getting out of Dodge, and we have millions in cash, and we can't get to a bank, we can't get to one of our safe houses, and we don't know what to do. And we're like, let's do this. I'm going to give you the cash. You go do this mission to protect the cash, and we have to wait, you know, call it two days until we can get to either a safe house or a bank. So for two days, I won't see him, and he'll have however many millions of my cash, and then he'll meet me whatever morning we're supposed to meet at location. Never a dollar's gone missing. Never. And we've done this countless times. And I, and so and it goes back to like uh, the team thing. <clears throat> a casino isn't just a fucking team; it's a goddamn NFL team of people. Like yeah. the casino has so many people; they're all a big team. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people probably think like, "Oh, this one man can come in here and take it over." Do you think like, or do you think like? Now this one man that has a, is a Batman and Robin and then possibly some other people in the back end, I don't know if you do or not, that helps 10x more. There are, just, just to touch on the one thing, there are certain avenues in my career where I have a very large team. Yeah. There are other avenues where it's a smaller team. There's never been a moment where I'm by myself, except when I basically, ex basically except when I play poker, right? And again, I'm, poker's like, it was like a hobby that I picked up during COVID when the casino shut down, yeah. right? But um, as far as like anything that I'm relying on the income for, I've never been alone for it. Especially security guards, because you have one here every time you're with me. You yeah, of course. Security well, guarded, yeah, like, security guards for sure. And I became good friends with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Val is the coolest dude ever. I love yeah. him so much. Yeah, man. yeah, same. He's always treated everybody so cool and like. Yeah. Okay, so w let's touch on this. Jack Doherty, uh huh, punched his fucking security guard. Punched that kid in the face. Rina Koff's boyfriend. Yeah. What's your What's your intake on that? <sighs> All right. It's so a touchy one. I don't know. So when I first saw the video of it happening, right, it looked to me like the kid. All right, so so Jack got into an argument and he said some like not nice things to Karina, but they're at the time they were friends and like it happens, like people yeah. friends fight, right? No big deal. And his image is shit talk. Yeah, that's like his thing, right? Yeah. And get the crowd riled, you know, whatever. And so he said nice things. She was upset, and his bodyguard, Jack's bodyguard, is his job is to protect Jack, right? Yeah. I can't imagine he is ever going to hit a woman, right? Especially a woman like Karina. But Karina's man, who probably feels like he's living in her shadow, right? I mean, which is hard not to, you, you know, when you're step dating. Step up and be the guy. Yeah, so he's like, I want to show my worth to you, babe. You know, I'm going to step up. And so when I first saw the video, what it looked like happened was he said, I need to step up. Here's my time to shine. And the bodyguard who's protecting Jack was next to Jack, and the kid, the boyfriend, steps up, and it looked to me like he tried to, like, kind of touch or push or tap the bodyguard, and immediately a bodyguard just hit him right in the yeah, face and I laid him out. See that, that is t uh, exactly, but... I saw it. What are you what doing when a guy's twice the size of you stepping up towards him, and you, w w if it was me, so, for instance, like, 
Like, I'm the type of guy where like, no matter wh- who, how big the person is, I'm going to stand my ground. Like, I uh, can fucking get my ass beat, and I'll hold my pride. That's how I am. Yeah. What are you doing when you're looking at a bigger man and not expecting that? Like, if it's me, I'm expecting to, like, th- that's happening right away. Well, this is this is the problem, though. So, what it I thought it looked like happened, and, and that's what it appeared to be at first view, right? And I watched it a few times, and... I go, that, yep, that's what happened. He, like, made an aggressive motion towards the bodyguard. The bodyguard responded swiftly, yeah. right? That's actually not the true story. What actually happened was Karina's boyfriend put his hand out to shake the bodyguard's hand like, I'm sorry, we don't want the smoke. Oh. And the bodyguard two-timed him. So what it looked like was supposed to be, like, meeting of the hands for a handshake, he went like this, kept going, fisted up, and punched the kid. And that's when you realize that that's actually what happened. That's where you see the guys in the wrong. God, that's a tough position to be in yeah. for him, and not necessarily the bodyguard because it could have been a lot of other things to not punch the kid in the face. I'll okay. go ahead and say that. Uh, but I will also say this, and this is not that I'm defending Jack, right? There's a lot of things Jack does that he's accountable or should be accountable, and I believe is responsible for a negative outcome, right? And a lot of times it's like violence, like all the all the streamers, they always like to fight each other at Jack's house. It's like their thing, right? That's their it's, it's, it's numbers. Yeah, it's numbers, and that's their thing, right? People enjoy watching it. They know what the, the influencers know what they're signing up for. They know they're going it's there. For, yeah, they're there for controversy. Let's take a. We're almost finished up. We got 20 minutes left, guys. Um, we are in a serious combo. Can I just show you this clip right now? <laughs> what is it? Steak. Oh, you guys are throwing steak at each other in the building. Oh my god. We stuck it to the wall. Oh my god. I think, uh, but uh, I think Mickey. Wait, wait. Music down. Music down. Sarah. 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 <laughs> You fucking. Hi. I mean, hi. No, you, it's high or low. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> One second. Give us a second. Let me close this at least. Then we can go in there and have a good time. Um, I think we talked on a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Um, I just like, wanna, let me just finish the thought about Jack before Jack gets mad, right? Yeah, yeah. I just want to say that um, people around him know what they sign up for, and that's like his thing. Okay, sick. We got fresh Wagyu in the fucking bonfire. <laughs> anyway, you could also see that Jack did not instruct his bodyguard to be violent. And I'm not saying that Jack's always innocent in stirring the drama and stuff like that, but in this particular circumstance. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm not support not I'm, not, I'm not backing him and I'm not no, I'm not like pro or con. I'm not picking side Karina versus Jack. I'm not saying that. You know, but but I just want to say that one particular stance I'll speak on, you can see there's a video, it was live streamed. Nobody was instructed. Nobody instructed the bodyguard to be violent, right? Yeah. I just say that in that one particular moment. I'll speak that's on a, that. yeah, because I I feel the same way. Yeah. I, I can comfortably say the same thing because it, it's a t- touchy thing too. Like I don't I don't want to say shit and be wrong. What the fuck? Low key, I'm in half your videos, and I think they're the best half. Hey, I will <laughs> fucking promise you that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this podcast with us. I love all of you guys that are watching. I love you, Mickey. And I love you. And uh, this New Year's is going to be amazing in 2024. I look forward to it being a good year. So um, stay tuned, everybody. Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>